All right, so a physical change is a change that occurs when a substance changes from one state, sorry, when it changes its form or state without changing what it is made of or the composition. As a result, physical changes can easily be reversed. Example, ice melting, a crushed soda, a broken glass. Okay, and in the picture, we can see that you have ice melting at the top and at the bottom, you can see a broken glass. Anything that is easily reversible, okay? Meaning I could get it back to its original state. So if I have this piece of paper here, okay? And I want to change this physically. I can do a number of things. I can fold the paper and ball it up. Now, if I want to get this back to its original state, all I have to do is unfold it or spread it out as best as I can, okay? That's what we refer to as a physical change. Very good. Ice, I can freeze it, okay? Or if I want it to continue to melt, I can leave it out, okay? All right, so another example or some examples of physical change may be butter, and we use butter already. And I think in the session before, we talked a little bit about butter. And and we talked about what happens when butter melts as well as when it freezes. So butter is one of those is similar to, it's like water, not totally, but it can melt and can freeze again. Another one could be the salad dressing separates. Now I know all of you have salad dressing in your refrigerator at home. And we put it in the refrigerator, especially the one with oil and the particle thingies in it. And you shake it up and it looks like the actual, the first picture of the salad dressing. You could see the, um, the particles go throughout it. When you put it back on a counter or you put it back in the fridge, it actually separates back in the fridge, okay? That's an example of a physical change once it can go back. So for example, if I wanted to paint my house, if my house is yellow and I wanted to paint it red, I could always take it back to yellow because it's, it's able to be reversed. It's considered to be a physical change. All right, now a chemical change is one in which a, a new substance is formed. It is not reversible, okay? The changes are usually permanent and examples are burning wood, rusting iron, a rotten apple, etc. okay? So I'm gonna ask in my chat this morning, who can tell me a way to physically change this paper? I could burn it, thank you. Okay, now if I tear it, is can I get the paper back if I tear it as a chemical change? No, so I would have to burn it or let it turn to ash, very good, very good answers, okay? So physical means I'm able to get it back. So even if I tear the paper all the way through, I could still get this back to its original state, okay? I could use tape, I could use glue, and I could get it back. But if I use a lighter, if I use fire to it, it's gonna turn to ash, and I will not be able to get it back to its original state. Okay, someone said I was going a little too fast. 
I hope we're going a little slow for you now. All right, so some examples of chemical changes are on the screen. Okay, so if you quickly look, you will see that sugar is dissolving in tea. That's chemical because we will not be able to get that sugar back out of the tea very easily. Okay, another one is the wood burning. Similar to paper, you will not be able to get that one back. Also, breaking up water by separating into hydrogen and oxygen. Now, this one is a little very advanced for grade seven level, but we do have chemists that actually could separate um, hydrogen and oxygen, okay, by lighting it a fire and letting it um, turn to steam all the way through, okay? Cooking an egg, very good, okay? Uh -oh. All right, so here are some examples. Now, of course, you can answer me in the chat, okay? You will, you're just basically gonna go down the list. Now I'm gonna see how best I can write for you guys. All right, so the first one I think is cutting wood. Um, okay, text. All right, so cutting wood would be what type of change? Would it be a physical or a chemical change? All right, um, I do have someone who says they are not, they do not know what it will be. So let me just remind you, a physical change is one in which that it, the change can be reversed. You can get the substance back. A chemical change is one in which you cannot get the substance back. It's going to be changed forever. Okay. So the first one was cutting wood. The second one is making sculptures. Making clay sculptures. Okay. So think about clay that you actually play with or had played with before. Would it be physical or chemical? You're welcome. All right, awesome job, guys. Very good. Okay, the, no the next one is frying an egg. Someone had already said this one. All right, so that one is chemical. And I see someone answering all one time. Thank you so much. All right. This one says, fog a foggy mirror in the bathroom. Is that a physical or a chemical change? Okay, that's chemical. All right. All right. Now, I, I see two people are saying that, three now, saying that it's a chemical change. Remember now, we're talking about a foggy bathroom mirror. We're not talking about so much as the, we're not talking too much about water. We're talking about the bathroom mirror. So if it's foggy, meaning that it's cloudy, we can't see it properly, will we take a towel and what could we do? We could wipe it off. So will it go back? to its original state. Yes. So therefore, will it be a chemical or will it be a physical change? Good, it's gonna be a physical change. All right, water evaporating. Physical or chemical? Let's see who's paying attention here. It is a physical change. Can anybody in the chat tell me why water evaporating will be a physical change? And then I will, I will read your answer out loud.
okay because water will come back to water okay because it can be turned back to a liquid very good because you can change it because it can go back okay all right so in your mind i want you to think about putting boiling water on the stove and you have a liquid in your pot you add some heat to it it evaporates but if you catch it back it's going to turn back to a liquid so it's a physical change once it can be reversed and you can get your substance back it is considered to be a physical change yeah, about five more examples to see if you can handle them on your own Let me just remove. All right, now if you can answer all of them, then you have to tell me, you have to um, do the number for me. Please, so I can see because the chart is going to move really fast. Okay, I'm getting seven as physical and chemical. All right, that's your answers from six to ten. I want you to look carefully at number seven because I got two answers for number seven. And I want to make sure you understand what is happening. So number seven is digesting food. Now, this is a very, very good question, actually. Um, if you are digesting food, it means digesting... I'm going to hurt your brain a little bit. Digesting food means that you are using chemicals to break down your food, okay? However, it can be a physical process as well because you are getting rid of unwanted food, okay? So I don't want to hurt your brains too much. We're going to leave it as a, as a chemical change, even though it has some physical parts to it. So number seven would be a chemical change. Mm. All right, so burning paper, chemical, digesting food, chemical. Number eight, let me just move my screen. Number eight is tearing paper. Number nine is baking a cake, that's chemical. And number 10 is a broken vase. Okay, now we're gonna wrap up. We have about 10 minutes to go to see if you can classify the pictures in 
the correct column as a physical change or as a chemical change. Now, the idea was for you to actually do it. Um, you would use a piece of paper and you would draw a line down the middle, make two columns. On one side, you put physical, the other side, you would put chemical. Okay. So, we're going to do it like this. We're going to look at each picture and the person in the chat, whatever random order you come in, you can tell us if it's physical or it's chemical. All right. So, the first one I have is a broken glass. And Miss Hune says that a broken glass is a physical change. That's awesome. The second one is freezing a popsicle. It, would that be a physical or a chemical? Okay, it's going to be a physical change. Spoiling milk. Okay, I know it's a lot, but we have to go in order so that everyone could know what we're talking about, okay? All right, so if we if milk is being spoiled, it is a chemical change. Good. The fourth one is cutting grass or mowing grass. Would that be a physical or a chemical? Very good, Ms. Williams. Kamari, it is a physical change. Why? Because the lawnmower, sorry, the grass eventually would grow back. Slicing bread, physical or chemical? Okay, Miss McKenzie said it's chemical. Harrison said it's chemical. Mr. Merritt says it's physical. Okay, we are slicing bread. Would we be able to get the bread back to its original compass? Well, can we reverse the change? Now, slicing bread is considered to be a physical change. We're not truly changing the bread. We're only changing um, its appearance. It's something like we look at already, tearing paper, okay? Even though it's sliced, we can still, it, we can still get it back to a loaf. Now, if we put it in the oven or we toast it really long and it turns to, it, it gets very, very brown, then that would be considered as a chemical change. But slicing bread now, it's a physical change. Okay. Roasting marshmallows. Roasting marshmallows is a chemical change. Thank you, Miss Bean. Breaking an egg. Fireworks, chemical change. Mixing Kool-Aid. Let me hear this one. What is mixing Kool-Aid? Okay, can anybody tell me why? I see a lot of people saying it's a chemical change. Why is mixing Kool-Aid a chemical change? Can we get the Kool-Aid and water back to its original content. Can we make that possible? Okay, no. What about if we boil the Kool-Aid? To the orange? Okay, he said no. Okay, now let me ask you guys. Remember now, we are talking about if we could reverse it. It doesn't really mean that the juice has to go 
um, it, it wouldn't fall out. But can we, if it be poured in the glass, while we squeeze it in the glass, can we pour it back into the orange? Yes, so the, the change can be reversed, okay? Remember, it's only chemical if the content change completely. Like we know for sure, for sure, for sure, we cannot get it back. Example, if we burn on a house, we know for sure we cannot get that, those blocks back. We cannot get those contents in the house back. So I want you to think about it clearly because some of these pictures are a real, they could challenge your brain a little bit, okay? All right, burning toast. So we put our bread in the oven. We have three more minutes. We put our bread in the oven and it completely burns. It's going to be a chemical, Mr. Roy. Very good. Burning wood. Would that be chemical or physical? Good. Edwinique. I think I said it correctly. Burning wood would be a chemical change. Good. Popping popcorn. Now I love this one. Good, it's gonna be a chemical change, very good. I thought some people would have say physical, good. So we can get it back to its original state. The second to the last one, bleaching hair. Bleaching hair. Would it be chemical or would it be physical? From Ms. Harrison, Mr. Andrews, very good. Williams, Monroe, it's going to be a physical change. Now, can someone explain very quickly why would bleaching or coloring your hair would be a physical change? You can change it back to its original color. Very good. Very good. All right. And the last one on the screen is melting hot chocolate. It's going to be a physical change, physical. Okay, so if I see some person saying physical now. Now, when you told me we were mixing Kool-Aid and water, you told me that was chemical. So now we are melting chocolate. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm thinking hot chocolate. Sorry. So it does say it's, it does say it's melting chocolate. So if it's melting chocolate, then it's a physical change. Yes. You guys are awesome. This week, we will be going over the topic, Author's Purpose, Persuasive Devices. My name is Jolyn Studs, and I will be your facilitator for today's lesson. By the end of this lesson, students should be able to 1. Identify and explain the intended effect of propaganda techniques that, are, that is, bandwagon, generalizations, testimonials, transfer, and emotional words. 2. Students should be able to distinguish between valid and faulty generalizations. And three, students should be able to critique persuasive techniques used in various media. Now that we've gone over our objectives, let's move to our next slide, which will be a quick review. Now, first question, what was the topic last week for last week's lesson? If you said author's purpose, you are correct. Question number two. Why do authors write? If you said to persuade, inform, and entertain, you are absolutely correct. Question number three. Give some examples authors use to inform its readers. If you said newspaper articles, narrative essays, biographies, 
recipes, and more, you are correct. Question number four. What are some examples authors use to entertain its readers? If you said comic strips, fiction books, jokes, poems, you are on the right track. And lastly, question number five. Give some examples authors use to persuade its readers. If you said advertisements, flyers, persuasive essays, and much more, you are absolutely correct. Very good, boys and girls. You remembered our last week's lesson. Now we're going to expand a little bit more on one of those reasons why authors write. And we're talking about the reason to persuade. Today we're going to take a further look into persuasive devices. So, before we get started, there's a song that I want to teach you. It's called the Propaganda Technique Song, and it's to the tune of Down Home by one of our Bahamian singers, Bill Stubbs. A person only uses propaganda when they're writing a piece to persuade you. They'll use bandwagon transfer generalizations to get you thinking just like the way they do. Propaganda techniques in reading. Propaganda techniques in reading. Propaganda techniques in reading. Authors use them to persuade you. Hey, 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 hey. Bum, bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, them loaded words are filled with emotions. You'll be crying happy in love to name a few. When a politician wants a vote from you, they'll show you they are playing votes like you too. Propaganda techniques in reading. Propaganda techniques in reading. Propaganda techniques in reading. Authors use them to persuade you. Hey, 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 hey. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. If you see Buddy here, give you a testimonial. You better believe he used that product for true. That transfer technique can be so persuasive. They'll use the national flag to gain your respect too. Propaganda techniques in reading. Propaganda techniques in reading. Propaganda techniques in reading. Authors use them to persuade you. Propaganda techniques in reading. Propaganda techniques in reading. Propaganda techniques in reading. Authors use them to persuade you. Hey, 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 hey. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. All right, boys and girls, good singing along. Now, let's move to our next slide. How do you go about selecting the best contender? Look at the pictures below. You have a picture of our Prime Minister, Dr. Hubert Menace. You have the leader of the DNA. We have an independent candidate. And a leader of the opposition. Question I ask you again, how do you select the best contender? Or the best chicken sandwich? Is it Burger King? McDonald's? Popeyes? Kentucky Fried Chicken? Or Wendy's? Well, in order to select the best choice, you need to look for details or evidence to support your decision. But 
you must first discover who is presenting the details. Ask yourself the question, are the details true? Or is the organizer or the advertiser just using propaganda techniques to convince me? Hmm, think about it. So the next question is, what is propaganda? Let's read together. Sometimes authors write to convince you to do something or to think a certain kind of way. An author's efforts to persuade you is sometimes called propaganda. Propaganda is the spreading of ideas to convince people to believe, to do, or to buy something. It influences people's behavior, their opinions, and their emotions. It is found in most ads you see and hear. And propaganda can also be found in political speeches. So the next question brings up is, who uses propaganda? The media. Always, they use propaganda. Advertisers and organizers. Politicians. And guess what? Even you and I, we use propaganda. Trying to persuade persons. So the next point we come to is, what are some propaganda techniques? If you were listening very closely to the song, you might have heard one or two techniques mentioned in the song. Anybody remember? Let's take a further look. Did you remember hearing the word generalizations? Did you remember hearing the word bandwagon? What about Buddy Heal giving testimonials? We heard about loaded words filled with emotions. We call them emotional words. And last but not least, we talked about transfer. These are some of the propaganda techniques that authors would use to persuade you. Let's go further and find out what each one of these are all about and how is it they are actually used. The first one we're going to be talking about is bandwagon. And with bandwagon, it suggests that everybody is doing or buying something. So you must do it too, just because it's probably the right thing to do. Most times would hear the statement, join the crowd or the bandwagon, if you want to fit in. And we know that's a common thing that's done on a daily basis. An example sentence or statement may be, everyone is rooting for the Shell Saxon superstars to win the parade. Might as well be a fan too. That's an example of a bandwagon statement. Let's go to our next slide. What about testimonials? A testimonial is when a famous person recommends or approves someone, a product, or something. Example Buddy Heal says that Gatorade is the drink of champions. If you drink it, you will be a champ just like him. In this testimonial, Buddy Heal is persuading you to drink Gatorade if you want to be just like him. Our next device is transfer. Transfer is a device that uses symbols, quotes, or pictures famous people to communicate a message to others. So our example here is what? Bamboo Shack used the dive of Shawnee Miller Rebo, Olympic gold medalist, to create a special that would bring customers to their establishment in recognition of her. Anybody can see what I see? Bamboo Shack is using Shawnee Miller to persuade you to come to their establishment to get food. This is called transfer. 
let's move on to our next device generalizations generalizations give partial truth or some sort of truth but provides little evidence they speak for a large group or it exaggerates a matter they sometimes include words like always never all one everyone and none so let's look at our example sentence look at the pictures to the right i'm sure everybody knows about this laundromat at superwash you will never be disappointed they will wash you press you and clean you while you wait at the lowest prices in town statement or exaggerate for a large group. And we move to our last device, emotional words. This device uses positive words to describe a product, a person, or idea. These words leave you feeling a certain way about that product, that person, or that idea. So an example we have, Shop John Bull Limited, we deliver smiles. Now, after going over those five propaganda techniques, let's practice. I want you to look at the pictures below and come up with a persuasive statement using one of the propaganda devices. You can pause the video or you can wait a while. I'm going to give you just a few minutes to think of a statement that you can come up with using the pictures below. We have milk and we have a picture of Dwayne Wade, famous basketball star from the Miami Heat. Now, I'm sure you came up with an awesome statement. I'm just going to share one that I came up with. Milk, it does a body good. After all, Dwayne Wade, he drinks it. There goes my statement, persuasive statement, using one of the propaganda techniques. And of course, that would have been a transfer or that could have been a testimonial that I used a while ago. I wonder which one you use. Let's move to our next slide. Now, let's recap. Very short and quick lesson. Let's recap. Question number one. How do you make the best decisions on persuasive statements? Anybody care to share? Well, if you said, look for details and evidence that support your decision, then ask yourself, are the details true or are these propaganda techniques? You're correct. That's how we go about making the best decisions on persuasive statements. Which brings us to our second question. Explain to me then what is propaganda? If you said it is something that's used to persuade persons or to convince people to believe something, then you're correct. Propaganda is the spreading of ideas to convince people to believe, to do, or to buy something. It influences people's behavior, their opinions, and their emotions. So then, that brings us to question number three. Name some propaganda techniques that we mentioned in the lesson. Think about the song that was sang earlier. Testimonials, I hear. Bandwagon. Transfer. Let's go and find out. If you 
use a bandwagon, generalizations, transfer, testimonials, or emotional words, you are absolutely correct. Let's go to our next slide. Now, this is a little activity. Can you match the definitions to their techniques? In column A, we have the definitions. A, B, C, and C, D, and E. And in column B, we have propaganda techniques. So, let's go through this together. Looking at A, join the crowd if you want to fit in. Which technique is this talking about? If you said bandwagon, you are absolutely correct. Let's go to B. This device uses positive words to describe a person, product, or idea. If you said emotional words, you are absolutely correct. Let's go to C. A device that uses symbols, quotes, or pictures of famous people to convey a message. transfer, you are absolutely correct. This technique gives partial truth but provides no evidence. If you said generalization, you are on the right track. And lastly, a famous person recommends or approves a product, someone, or an idea. There you have it. That is a testimonial. Very good boys, John. But very good job, boys and girls. You were paying quite attention today in class. Which brings us to our final slide. These are some of the resources that we used in this lesson. We use www.google.com. We also use Comprehension Plus Level F propaganda techniques in the media. Well, there you have it. That brings us to the end of another exciting lesson in media comprehension. I'm sure that you've learned something today and I hope that you will put it into practice. As we close it today, we're going to end with the chorus of the song that we started off with. Propaganda techniques in reading. Propaganda techniques in reading. Propaganda techniques in reading. Authors use them to persuade you. See you next week, boys and girls. Remember, defeated means beaten, overcome, or to lose. You would be disappointed if you were defeated. Defeated. I'd love to see you using this week's word. Please share your videos on our Flipgrid using the link below or scan this QR code.